Welcome everybody. My name is Herbert Gillig. I am responsible for the new venture program at the Strasik Center for Entrepreneurship at the Munich University of Applied Sciences. And I would like to talk today to you about the question, how do great entrepreneurs think? And give you an introduction to the topic of effectual entrepreneurship. Let me start with a question. When you think about very successful startups, what do you think? What is the basis for this success? Is it the planning process which these startups have or is it, is it something else? This is a very uh, difficult question and let us have a look at a comparison between the classic managerial thinking and the effectual thinking. The classic managerial thinking is very goal oriented. That means everything starts with a given goal and then the manager, the responsible manager, has the duty to think about the necessary resources and the necessary means to reach these given goals. In comparison, when we have a look at effectual thinking, it is totally different. Here we start with the given means, that means the resources which are available for the entrepreneur at this point in time. In the second step, the entrepreneur will then use imagination and creativity to think about possible results which he or she could reach by combining this given means. So you can see we have really a huge difference between the managerial thinking on the one side and effectual thinking on the other side. Let me give you a brief overview over the development of the effectuation approach. This approach was developed by Professor Saraswati when she researched the question, what is the difference between normal entrepreneurs and very successful entrepreneurs, which she called expert entrepreneurs. Her method to research this was to give expert entrepreneurs very difficult entrepreneurial problems and ask them to think aloud during the solution process. And she wrote everything down, what they said during this process, analyzed afterwards the protocols and tried to somehow extract an underlying logic. And she was really successful. She could identify five common principles which today form the basis of the effectuation approach. And this effectuation approach is really well known and very strongly discussed today in the entrepreneurship community. And there also is extensive research in, the, in this field. And we see today really new emerging fields like the topic of corporate effectuation, which deals with the question, how can we apply these principles of effectuation in a corporate setting? So if you want to somehow define effectuation, you can look at it as a set of decision-making principles which expert entrepreneurs are observed to employ in situations of uncertainty. Uncertainty, very important term. What does this mean for an entrepreneur? When we think of an, a classic entrepreneurial situation, the entrepreneur tries to enter a market with a product. And if we put this situation in a two by two matrix, we, on the one hand, we have a new or a known market. And on the other side, we have a known or also a new product. And I think it's quite clear that in this two by two matrix, the field where the entrepreneur tries to enter a new market with a new product is the field where uncertainty is really very high. And that means that effectuation can really help us in this field to make good decisions. But now let's think about and discuss about the five principles which were identified by Professor Saraswati and which really are the basis for effectual entrepreneurship today. The first principle of the effectuation approach is the bird in hand principle. As we have seen in the introduction, this principle is about the question, 
what means do I really have under my control? And therefore, an effectual entrepreneur asks himself, what type of person do I am? Do I am? What is my character? What are my abilities? And also, of course, what type of education do I have? And third very important point is to think about your network, about your private network, about your professional network. So the question is, who, whom do I know and who could I somehow integrate into my startup? And the next step is after thinking about possible results is then to really get started and to select the result which is really close to the long-term vision which an entrepreneur of course should also have. But the point is really start, get going and don't wait to find a resource or, or some means which you don't have currently under your control. The second principle of the effectuation approach is the so-called lemonade principle. And the basis of this principle is that an effectual entrepreneur should always have his curiosity radar on. That means the entrepreneur should always be ready for surprises. He or she should even look out for surprises, go to events, get to know new people, because every new person and every new piece of information really gives you the possibility to change your means and your resources. That means as an entrepreneur, then you can again ask the question, what can I create new? Because you have new resources, you have new means, that means you have new possible results and new possible goals. And this is really like an ongoing process. That means as an entrepreneur, you should never switch off your curiosity radar. You should always be open for new surprises. And it's really interesting to watch this when we consult our teams, how some teams uh, really, really do very well with this principle and they remain very open and discuss with a lot of people during the whole process. The third principle is the so-called affordable loss principle. That means that an effectual entrepreneur does not focus so much on potential revenues or the potential profit he could make, but he really focuses on the affordable loss. That means a red line which he defines and this really tells him what loss am I as an entrepreneur willing to accept. And this red line should be made for different categories, for example, of course for money, but also thinking about time. How much time do I want to invest, for example, in a pilot project? It really makes sense, for example, to say, I will invest th three months in this project, and if it does not work out, I will pivot, I will change direction, and will try out something new. So therefore, the entrepreneur should really ask questions concerning his affordable loss or the loss which he or she is willing to accept. The fourth principle is the pre-commitment principle. It's about the question how should an effectual entrepreneur cooperate with partners and maybe even more important, how should he or she select partners for cooperation. And when it comes to cooperation, it's always about negotiation. And you probably all know the classic negotiation approach, which uh, is more between opponents than between partners, where the question is, who gets the biggest piece of a cake which is to be divided? And of course, most of the time, you really create win-lose situations in such cases. A uh, much better way to deal with this is to sit together with your cooperation partner and think about possibilities to make the cake bigger and then to think about possible solutions where every partner is a winner and create so-called win-win situations. But when it comes to effectuation, the situation is totally different. Because 
there is no cake at this point in time, so the partners really have to think about what do we want to cook together. And there is no question like how can we divide the cake. Therefore, it's really important for an, an entrepreneur when he thinks about potential partners to ask these partners what are they willing to commit? What type of pre-commitment will they put into the game? This can be money, this can be time, this can be other resources, but the important thing is that every cooperation partner should really have, like uh, the saying is, some skin in the game to uh, form a successful cooperation. The fifth and last principle is a kind of overarching principle and it's called the pilot principle. The pilot principle tells us that an effectual entrepreneur should use all the other four principles, the bird in hand principle, the affordable loss principle, the lemonade principle and the pre-commitment principle to really steer his startup and his venture without having the necessity to predict the future. Like a good pilot, he should be able to really steer his venture through the different things which happen around him. And this effectuation approach, as it was researched by Professor Saraswati, really shows us how expert entrepreneurs make the decisions and therefore I think it's very useful for young entrepreneurs to learn about these principles and try to apply them. And I would like to finish my brief introduction to effectual entrepreneurship with a quote by Peter Drucker who said, the best way to predict the future is to create it. Thank you very much and if you have any questions or comments I'm really happy to get in contact with you. So you see my email, just drop me a line. Thank you.